Welcome back to another OpenTunes animating tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at the drawing tools available in OpenTunes. We're not going to be doing anything with animating or actually creating an animation. We're just going to look at the, the ways that we can draw, so the different tools available to us. We, like we talked about in the last video, if we just click on the brush here and start drawing, it's going to assume we want to work in vector. Um, if you're unsure on that, we can change and go to new level and set it as raster. Check out the previous video where, where we talked more about that. But just be aware that these tools over here, different tools uh, work differently for raster and vector, and some tools are only available in vector, and some tools are only available in raster. Um, when we select a tool like the brush, it brings up some options across the top here. So I'm going to left click and hold and just we draw a line to change the size of that of our brush we can scale this up a little bit and now we have a larger brush we can change the size back down so whatever we click on if we click on this shapes um, you'll notice there's not a, an option for like a triangle shape a circle shape it's all just shapes and to toggle the type of shape is up here under this drop down so by default I think it's rectangle we left click and by default this will be down here kind of smaller size and so we can change the size of the border uh, we can change the actual shape we're doing. Uh, we can, if we go to do like polygon here, then we have this polygon sides. So we can do the three-sided polygon, which is a triangle. We change the size of that down a little bit. We can change it to a five-sided and do like a polygon like this. We can change it up and have eight sides, like a stop sign. Um, this next tool, this next one here. Actually, I'm going to hit Control Z a few times, and we'll just get rid of some of these just so it's a little bit more clean. Click on this text here, and that's gonna do kind of what you would imagine. This is some text. And then we can select either all of it by left-clicking and highlighting all of it, and then we can uh, change the way it looks. We can move it all around. Or if we click on a single letter, every single letter is actually a different object. So that's kind of cool. And that's again in vector. Text will be behave differently in raster. I'm going to hit Control Z a few times, get rid of that. I'm going to draw a shape here, actually. I'm going to draw this shape because for the Fill tool, actually, let me do a couple different shapes. Let's do a rectangle here, and let's do a circle right here. Uh, what I'm going to do is, for this next one, this is the Fill tool, and it behaves, well, not necessarily how you might think. So we click, and we can fill in this with, with the color we have selected. Down here, the color is black. Over here is the area to create new color, um, like they're called styles, under our palette. So our palette now only has two colors. We'll go over this more in future videos, but if we want to try and change this color, it'll actually change everything that, that was in that color. It changes it universally. So what we want to do is probably leave that black, and you click this icon here to add a color. Now we have a, a red color we can fill in the center of these, and then so whatever we have selected is how that fill tool works. It's a little bit confusing. The next video, we're going to talk a lot more about colors and styles, so I'm not going to touch on it any more than that. Um, if we click on this, we're going to see, you can hover over to see what, what a tool actually is. This is the paint brush tool. So this is going to be used more with raster, and so that's why it actually has, well, it's going to be used with raster because we can't use it in vector. It has that little circle with a line through it saying, nope, can't do it. Uh, this is the erase tool. It's going to work differently than you might think. So we can just left click and, and start erasing parts of this. But if we want to erase some of this red, we can't do it because that's actually a fill. And if we start erasing part of this, all of a sudden that red is gone. It can't be filled anymore. Because if it could be, it would fill the entire canvas. And the canvas is already filled with color zero, which is transparency. So. If you want to erase like part of this in here, you'd have to be in a raster image to do that. Uh, this next one, this tape tool, is to re-tape some of these, but that didn't work there because we're on color zero, so we need to tape it with color one. So we can tape that, and now it's fixed and repaired. That's kind of how we do it, as opposed to we could draw it with the brush, but then it might be, it's just not. We have to get the size exactly right. So the tape tool kind of takes this node and attaches it to this node and keeps the sizing and the um, all the attributes the same way they were. But you can tape in a different color. So we could tape like this, which is kind of interesting. I think we can tape. Can we tape down here? Anywhere there's a node, you can tape to. So we could tape from here to here. Um, and you can tape it in different colors as well. 
And now, I, I'm not sure what happens if we try and move this now, if we try and grab and move this. Yeah, they're not actually attached. So it's like just a, a line there. Uh, anyway, what's this one here? We have our over finger tool. I can't use this one. Uh, the eyedropper is going to be, so we have style picker, and then we also have uh, RGB picker tool. So style is going to pick from the styles down here. So we're on color two, if we want to pick to a different style. The RGB is going to actually pick, I'm not sure if we can do that one in this one or not. Oh, that's going to change everything. That's going to change that color. So control Z. I guess we'll do more with those. I don't use those too often. I guess we'll do more with those when we do the color tutorial next. Um, let's go down to this one here. So this is going to be what we've looked at kind of previously. This is what will let us uh, um, change different points. If we click on that in the middle of an actual line, we can bend it. If we click on the end points, the actual nodes, we can move where it starts and ends. These little handles that come up let us sort of adjust how strong the bend is. If we make it much, if we make it really long, if we make it really short, there's not much of a bend. And then also the angle of that that bend coming out of the node, if that makes sense. So everything we click on is going to have options for doing this. And like with this fill, because it's vector. Uh, the fill stays filling in. We don't have to redo it every time. So that's kind of nice. Whoop. There's some different tools here. So this pinch tool lets us do the same thing. We can pinch and grab the whole thing, but then it's going to adjust both sides of the node at the same time, which is kind of interesting, kind of nice. Oh, did that not go? Not sure why that one's not going. Maybe it's, maybe there's a color there that we don't know about. Um, this magnet, what's this called? hover over yeah magnet tool is going to be let us sort of if we click we can push in or out we can sort of almost like a it's kind of similar to the pinch tool you kind of just got to play with all these to figure out how to use them you'll get in your mode I don't use this tool very often I'd, I'd rather um, adjust it by using the different handles of like this but it, basically it's different ways of accomplishing the same thing so you can, oh, this is a cool one. This pump is how you can pump like the end. So you grab and you can make the end of this much larger and make this if you want to make smaller. That's how we can have like a large end here, a small end here. That's the pump tool. So we can pump up oh, just all these different parts, make it thinner. So it's a way you can very quickly adjust the stroke of certain parts of an object. Um, this iron. So iron is kind of does the same thing. It'll smooth out. Let me see if I have something really jagged here. Go to my color, black. So we make this really kind of jagged. And if it's a little bit jagged, we can actually iron out and smooth out. This is actually pretty smooth already. But the iron is just going to smooth out some of that. See that? So it takes away some of the jaggedness and just kind of smooths things out. So iron can be used to do smoothing. Um, cutter tool. Oh, this is if we want to actually just like cut. So maybe we want to move this. If we, if we want to select this whole object and move it around, well, maybe we want to just move half of it. So we grab our cutter tool and we can come to a certain point. It shows a little green line. We left click and now we actually have two separate objects. We have this one and we have this one. So that can be really useful, especially if you're not used to working in vector. That can be a, a good way because sometimes you'll draw something. You'll be like, ah, how do I make this different? You know, how do I move one part of it without the other and so that cutter tool can be very valuable there. So that's the tools you'll have for drawing in vector. Just know some of them aren't going to work the same way. A lot of these lower ones we t covered here. Basically for raster you have these top uh, five to work with. Um, yeah, hopefully you found that informative. In the next video we're going to talk a lot more about colors and styles and then we'll get into the actual animating and animation and you're going to be glad to have all this, you know, this uh, drawing information under your belt before you get into animation. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.